Welcome to another edition of Fisher Cats Focus. Kevin Gray of the New Hampshire Union Leader, joined today by Anthony Ghost. 20 years old, already made a, a big impact uh, on a four-game winning streak here. First time I talked to you, you said that you really like being on the field, making a difference, getting the crowd into the game. You want to be the guy in the limelight. Not a lot of guys would say that, but that's who you are and your personality. Yeah, yeah. I like to. I want to be the star all the time. Every night, I want to be. I want to do something spectacular, whether it's on defense, on the bases, at the plate. I want to do something that um, gets some oohs and ahs from the crowd, makes everybody, you know, leave the night, leave that night saying that guy can really play. Yeah, and we see that, you know, stealing bases as well. And when you get on first, and the game changes, you can see, you know, the hitters are going to get more fastballs. Pitcher is worried about you. He's going to get out of his rhythm. So, from a team standpoint. You must love it when you can disrupt the game like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily have to benefit me the most, you know, with the stolen base. But, I mean, the guys behind me driving more runs, um, get better pitches to hit, and then inevitably I end up scoring more runs, which helps me and makes me look better also. So in, in the grand scheme of things, everything, you know, revolves around the team and comes back to, you know, everybody and everybody producing. All right, well, we need to remind you to keep your passport with you at all times because we've seen guys go from right here up to Toronto. Jesse Litch one day got the call. He did not have his passport on him. They were on the road, had to make a special trip back to Manchester. So, I mean, it brings me to the point you guys are, are pretty close. I mean, if there's a need and you're playing well, and, and I know things have to line up perfectly, but, but at some point it has to dawn on you. I'm pretty – this could happen any time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always in the back of, you know, everybody's mind who's in this clubhouse, you know. And when you're in Florida State League, you go, you know, I just want to get to double A. Then when you're double A, you're thinking, hey, you know, now I can get the call because, you know, now the call isn't, it's not maybe, maybe it's not a collect call anymore. Maybe it's, you know, right. it's not long distance anymore. Yeah, it's not long distance anymore. You know, we might be in the same area code or same state to make that call. And it, it feels pretty good. It's exciting, you know, but in the um, overall, I still got to go out here and play the game and do things right for those things to happen. Mm -hmm. All right, we're talking with Anthony Ghost, Fisher Cats leadoff or number two hitter. He's been going back and forth with Adani Echevarria. How exciting is it to be surrounded by this kind of talent? A lot of young, you know, all-star type players here. And it reminds me, all-star game is going to be here this year in Manchester. So maybe I'll keep you around for the uh, Eastern League all-star game. But to be part of this young group coming up must be a lot of fun. Oh, the team here, this is the best team I've ever been a part of um, talent-wise. Everybody on the field can play. I mean, Diaz and Echevarria on the on the infield with McDade and Sobolewski and Travis Brown to play. That's the best infield I've ever been a part of. Um, you know, and in the outfield you have Moise Sierra, who has the best arm I've ever seen that I've played with, I should say, um, in the outfield. And he's you know out there in Tolosano, you know, a power hitting left fielder. So this mm -hmm. is this has been by far the best team. That I've ever been a part of. It. Yeah. It's about chemistry. chemistry and last year's team had great chemistry. Went to the playoffs. Anxious to see how you guys do on your first road trip because really, you know, players will tell you that's when a lot of bonding happens. And, and you guys, you're on, stuck on the bus and so much time together that that's when teams really start to, you know, gel. Well, a lot of things happen on the road. I mean, uh, like they say, what happens on the road stays on the road. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's when, like you said, guys come together because then it's just us. I mean, a lot of guys have their families in the in the hometowns, like here in Manchester. I don't know how many exactly, but some guys will have their families, wives, girlfriends, in and out. But on the road, it's just us players and the coaches. So everybody really comes together, finds a way to get through those, you know, seven, eight days on the road and mm -hmm. make it make it as enjoyable as possible. Yeah, that journey is is always fascinates me. And we were on the road last year in New Britain, and you know, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. And you know, if you go 0 for 4 or you're in an 0 for 10 and you're at the hotel and there's no one around, it has got to feel really lonely. Yeah, it can, uh, it can, uh, it can, those white walls in the hotel can get to you a little bit. I mean, especially for a guy like me, like I'm underage, so I can't even go drink my sorrows away. So I, I'm kind of just stuck with, uh, That's devastating. with just, um, sitting there and hanging yeah. around, um, and, you know, just making the most of it, just laugh it off. Yeah, that's the best way I can say. Yeah, that the never-ending grind. We've seen guys have career years here in New Hampshire and just never catch that break, or maybe there's an injury. So it's it's that's the part of the game that I love in in the minor leagues is is that guys always you know on that journey. It's it's a new group of guys this year, and and 
you know, we were in Boston the other night and you, we see the, the Jays come down. You're so focused on the task at hand that you're not really thinking about tomorrow, I, I would guess. No, I mean, um, I can't think about tomorrow when I have tonight to play. So um, I just go out and um, try and do my best every night, help the team win um, as best I can. Um, lately it's been on defense, uh, but uh, every chance I get, I'm out there to help the team win and make a great uh, – Make do something special. We've seen uh, the catch you made the other night was one of the best catches we've seen. I put it right up there with Jacoby Ellsbury when he came through here. Um, I want to put Evan, the clubhouse manager, on the spot because he's he's uh, just walked into the room. We're doing a extended interview with Anthony Ghost here, and I guess clubhouse attendant manager they're like part of the family. How big a deal is it to have a good clubby in the in this business? Oh, that's everything. I mean, someone that you can depend on to you know do something for you um obviously you know there are things that come with that uh but i mean to have someone in the clubhouse that'll just take care of things for you um all the time if you need something you need someone picked up you need something arranged you need something from the store someone that can just that's always there for you um and is on top mm -hmm. of things is is wonderful almost like a personal but, assistant. yeah i will tell you and, and evan is always around i'm not pumping him up because he's right here but I've been, this is my eighth year doing this. This guy's the best. What, what kind of feedback do you get, and how much have you learned doing this from the players in recent years? Uh, you don't uh, go home at night until you have 25 players' needs done, as well as uh, any number of coaches. you got to make it a personal commitment to do 30 different styles of catering to these guys because you're not going to find one guy that's the same as the other. And it takes time. The more time that you can put into uh, – you know, getting familiar with each one of these guys and finding out what they want to do makes it a lot easier. And you definitely fall into a routine. But uh, bottom line is you can't call it quits on a day until, you know, guys like Anthony and everyone is happy. It's not one guy and it's not the 30th. All right, back with the Anthony Ghost. And by the way, do you have a nickname? Can we come up with something for you? What what's what have your buddies called you in the past? Uh, right now, the I guess the name going around from Mayshore, McDade, and... Uh, Darno is uh, the ghost man. Mayshore's, I think she's four-year-old daughter, gave me that name when I was visiting him this offseason. Ghost man. Ghost man. Not Tony? No. Just they, she just, I don't know, she just said the ghost man. I guess that was easy for her to remember. I like that. Because we're talking to a guy who had, what, 76 stolen bases in the minor leagues a couple years? So he's like a ghost on the base path. So I don't think she knows about that, but <laughs> <laughs> she hadn't read your uh, scouting report. Back then, but Anthony Ghost is uh, he's one of the top prospects in all of the Blue Jays system. We're happy to have him here uh, with the Fish Cats, and and I guess it's been uh, an interesting month for you, just just getting settled in, new to the area. I mean, you guys got to find a new place to live, and so take us through the first uh, you know two three weeks on the job. Um, you know, getting here, getting acclimated to the weather. That was um, the first two nights were just absolutely freezing cold um, compared to coming from Florida and uh, a lot of guys. Well. Me and Travis from back home in California, Southern California, where it's nice all year. And um, so the weather was the biggest thing. And then, you know, getting settled into a place to live here and um, then getting on the field and uh, getting back into, you know, season form.